agrogenomics business. It's my pleasure and honor to really welcome you to our session today, which is entitled the Applied Innovation for Agriculture and Food Systems. Um, make sure we get things right. So as the world's largest science company serving science, Thermo Fisher, I'm very proud of our mission today. And our mission really is to serve science and enable our customers for a healthier and safer world. Um, and no more critical is that mission than in the agriculture industry. Today's humanity, I'm going to say, in our agriculture industry today, right, it's a quite an economy, number one. Number two, the aspect of this, it's a very integral part of our society. Human's greatest, I'm going to say, endeavor has been the transformation of our planet for the production of food. As we look today, we understand it's a very complex system driven by societal factors, economic factors, political factors, as well as technological factors, all playing a role. But as we look closer, there are really three major trends today that are having a significant impact and driving change within this agricultural food system. We're going to talk a bit about those, and we're going to hear about some innovations that are addressing some of these issues. First and foremost, we recognize that these three factors widely accepted are changing the systems. Population growth is driving demand, demand for more food. It's a very simple equation. The more mouths we have, the more food we need. So it's driving an overall need for production. Countering to that is a growth in our urbanized population. So as the population is growing, it's moving into much more urban time frame. Now, the impact of urbanization is twofold. First and foremost is that we have less agricultural land for production, which is very counter to that need of increased production. The second aspect is that as we become more urban, we become much more affluent and wealthy. Our dietary changes require more quality. That quality tends to transfer itself into a demand for protein. Once again, very agriculturally intensive programs. So the third factor, and this is one we're hearing quite a bit about now, is climate change. Of all those three macro trends that we've described, this is the one that's introducing the most variables into our agriculture food system. So real quick, if we look at some of the warmer oceans, we're seeing it changing in the <coughs> disease ranges. The agriculture impact of that is very significant. We're going to start seeing diseases in places we haven't seen before. As we move a little further, the rising sea levels, we're losing arable land. Um, as we go a little further, the extreme weather, droughts, and floods, changing again the agricultural system that we have today. When we look at the snow, and less availability of water from this respect. We're seeing some growing seasons in certain areas become longer, shorter in others, and that has an impact. The impact tends to be around vectors and pests, a changing environment, new pests and vectors coming out. Now, if I was to stop here, that's a pretty grim and bleak outlook for us as a society. So I'm going to say I'm a little more positive, and there's hope, and I think the reason for this is that if you look at us as a society, over time, we've always risen to the challenge, and we've looked at science and technology to answer some of these challenges. So one of uh, agriculture's greatest achievements so far has been the realization of yields in corn. Right? Today, we're at an all-time high of yields that we achieve, and we're achieving these yields on less land. It's been driven by two factors. One is, of course, new breeding technologies and the adoption of breeding technologies. And second is agronomic practices. These new disciplines and the adoption of these disciplines have led to innovation in this space. Today, we're at a cusp. We're at something new. And it's really been driven by the application of genomic tools. So new gene editing tools allow us, allowing us to make more precision in our changes, number one. Number two, new tools such as marker-assisted breeding by genotyping by sequencing. Underpinning that, obviously, big data. These are the sciences that are going to drive us to the next wave of innovation. So if you think back to that need for production, right, they are technological advances that's going to help us get there. We as a society and we as humans, we often tend to exert pressure and need for changes. And another example that we can utilize and look at of interdisciplinary sciences coming together of making innovation and adopting innovation is in food and the delivery of food systems. So we're going to kind of take a walk down a timeline of food and food systems. In the 1940s, a lot of the societal pressures was around food for survival. We needed to produce more food and more from the agricultural side of the business than we had. 
So what sciences were put to play? The sciences were plant sciences, the use of fertilizers, crop protecting chemicals to help increase those yields. We had higher productivity, the start of higher productivity. As time went on, we started asking more from food. No longer did we want to just have it. We had the abundance necessary. But we said we wanted experiences with food. And that's really when we looked at some different sciences in order to do that. The material science, processing technologies, formulation, they all led to the ability for us to deliver food in a packaged format. The first of that, of course, was the TV dinner. But from those, it led to the frozen foods, which allowed us from a logistics standpoint to really distribute food very globally and very wide. As time moved on, we wanted more. And now we looked at a different type of science from a food perspective. We started looking at packaging innovation. We started looking at material sciences and packaging material that allowed us to go to what society was asking for. They wanted ready to eat and fresh foods. So a little change from the 70s. In order to do that, right, we have to go to those new sciences. It led to this innovation. So today, we can pick, let me see, Salinas Valley spinach on day one, and by day number three, we ship it on the East Coast, and it's in on a grocery shelf. You then purchase that for, let's say, a two day. And uh, two weeks later, that spinach still has the same nutritional value, it has the same freshness as it was picked on day number one. It was really enabled through the innovation through material science. As we're entering this genomics era, there's a recognition that we can impact something different, and we're asking the food system and the food an agriculture system to do something different. We're asking it to do health and wellness. We want to be healthy. We want the animals, we want the foods that we're ingesting to have a biological impact on us delivering health and wellness. And a lot of that has been driven through the understanding that we're gaining from the genomics side of the business. So looking at agrigenomics and nutrigenomics to do that. So today, what we're going to hear about is from four speakers that are actually utilizing these tools to help implement some of these changes and bring in innovation to our agriculture food system.